Welcome to Snooze with Sam. If you enjoy these stories, I'd love if you supported me by becoming a patron. Here you can get early access to every story, among many other benefits. You can find the link in the description. Whatever kind of day you've had, and whatever you're going through, let's be grateful for everything we have, even and especially the small and simple things. Right now, I'd like you to get comfortable and relax your mind. Tomorrow is a new day. So as always, lie back, take a deep breath, and enjoy this story. Tucked up in the back of your car, you gaze out over the loch. The boot lid is open, allowing an unobstructed panorama of your view. the most incredible display of sunset colours you've ever experienced. All coupled with the most serene spiritual surroundings of Loch Rannach, the geographical centre of Scotland. After a long day's walk, you're settling down for the night, having already put up your tent outside. The weather was gorgeous, sunny and still all day. A few moments ago, some isolated rain clouds drifted overhead and began sprinkling delicate droplets of rain. Creating a wonderful smell of wet earth, so difficult to describe, yet so seductive. You hopped into the back of your car, where your bedding still sat, a perfect little nest, just until the rain passed. Feet outstretched in front of you, towards the open boot lid of your car. You are stunned by what you see, the rain pitter-pattering on the roof. A 
As the clouds float gently across the sky, the sun reappears, low on the horizon, and turns your whole world a myriad of golden and pink shimmers and glows. Every single raindrop turns into a falling crystal, seemingly hanging in midair as the sun penetrates them with a radiant backlight. Before you hangs a curtain of glowing water droplets, slowly descending to the surface of the loch below, creating all sorts of sun rays, trying to force their way through. Behind this curtain lies the dramatic hills of Kinloch Ranach, a small and quaint village situated at the east end of the loch. These hills create a fortress on either side of the loch's edge, channeling all light up and down it like a water runway. The surface of the loch shimmers like nothing you've seen with such magical light to play with. Every droplet's ripples clash with a neighbouring set and another, and another. The distorted surface catches every colour under the sky. Deep greys from the clouds Flashes of blue from the sky. And the reddy oranges, pinks and rich golden hues from the setting sun in the west. Hanging just over the loch's surface now. Every few moments you close your eyes, just listening to the percussive sounds of the rain hitting the car's roof. It's softer than rain landing on the road or in puddles. It's the perfect sound to send you to sleep, should you choose to.
Just thinking of that makes you snuggle into your duvets and blankets even more. Getting cosier and warmer by the minute. Opening your eyes you notice the sun having lowered in the sky just that little bit more. Turning every colour you see just that little bit darker. The oranges and reds of the sunstruck clouds deepen. The greys darken and the blue sky turns a little inkier as the evening begins to turn to night. Still you focus on the falling water droplets, admiring how slowly they move, especially in the distance, where they don't seem to move at all. Everything around you is drenched in golden light. The surrounding hills. Your tent on the water's edge. The pebbles and grasses of the beach and the inside of your car. The lip of the open boot, spattered with broken water droplets. There is little breeze, so the rain mostly passes by. leaving you untouched from inside the car. As you shuffle a little, getting slightly comfier, you note how much this feels like a dream to you. Like this isn't real. Your view is ethereal. Like a painting. Not like real life at all. These colours in these landscapes seem to only exist in fiction. Yet here you are, feeling dozy in the back of your car, cocooned in lovely warm bedding.
peering out over Lochranach. As the setting sun illuminates your entire world, you watch the rain Every droplet landing on the water's surface. It is quite hypnotic. A slow moving panorama before you. How was it that one moment the weather could be fair and favourable? Yet the next would crescendo into an almighty storm. This is what the wee fairy had encountered next. Gale force winds, torrential rain, and crackling thunder some way off in the distance. It had been three hours since she'd made the crossing to Sky. One foolish part of her believed the hardest part of her journey was over. But the counterside to her optimism was the harsh reality of this wild island. This wild island, often named the Misty Isle. Huddled under a large rhododendron bush, the little fairy waited for some of the worst rain to pass. She was soaked to the skin. Her tiny purple dress sodden with rain.
The vibrant pink and purple flowers gave her some camouflage. making her lilac glow disappear to the unassuming eye. Each thunder boom racked her with nerves. As where she was going, the very last thing she needed was to be battling with lightning. From beneath a leaf, she peered out into the gloomy, glum afternoon drich. Speeding wind, ruffling her long blonde hair. There was a break in the rain. She could see it with her own eyes. One huge black cloud passed overhead. Another incoming threatened to strike within 20 minutes. Glancing to her left, she regarded the might of the Kulin mountain range. Ben Blavin looming above her. The summit disappearing into the boiling clouds. Now was the time. Clenching her teeth, fire in her eyes. She left the shelter of the rhododendron bush and flew out into the darkness. Just when she thought the wind and the rain had peaked in ferocity, it grew exponentially. Darting from rock to rock, on the 45 degree slopes, she was battered by the storm.
rain slashed against her delicate face. The wind tore at her little purple dress. And clattering thunder and lightning frightened her to her very core. The whole lot was right above her head. Dancing with the summit geology. That was where she was going. She needed to reach the ridge. Traversing every sequential black coolin until she was completely clear of the range. The fairy breached the top of the mountain and sought brief shelter behind a cairn, composing herself a little, thousands of feet in the air. The little fairy was distressed, full of panic. She'd not flown in such a storm before now. Maybe she should have waited at ground level for longer. She was here now. And she was hell-bent on getting back to her home, the Fairy Glen. She pressed on. It was like something out of a nightmare. A lightless alien landscape. Save for the frequent flashes of deafening lightning. Which illuminated the whole ridge like ghastly, gnarled teeth. Rain poured off the rocks like river rapids running through a glen the wind picking it up and churning it around again just for good measure
If there was any greenery up here, she couldn't see it. It was a barren, monochrome landscape. She couldn't see the ground for the rain and clouds. But the mountain sloped off violently either side of her, into the abyss. Onwards she pushed, eyes focused on the next rock, and the next, and the next. Small waypoints were her only hope here. She picked them off one by one. Sometimes the ground fell away, then climbed steeply again. She had hope that she was making progress over each peak that passed. Counting in her head, she named the Coolins. Ben Blavin, Skur Alastair, Skur Jerek, Bruach Nefria, all of which she's passed by now. Occasionally, she made a wrong turn. Sending herself down great, steep gullies of scree. The wind channeled like a venturi tube. She kept going and going, exhausted but as determined as ever. And then the ground beneath her wings started to descend, but this time continued on. It kept going down. She could see the light. At 
at ground level, the world around her changed entirely. She had made it. Over the following hours, the wee fairy soared high through the treetops of Sky's spine. Drying off beneath a clearing sky. The wind fell away to a steady breeze, and against all probability, the sun peered out from behind the clouds. Radiating heat and injecting new life into her. She allowed a tiny smile to blossom. Excitement filled her once again at the prospect of returning home. Cresting the final hill just south of Ueg, She was not disappointed by what she saw. Just as she left it, below her were great spiralling turrets of stone and moss. Beautiful spiral rock patterns cast across the earth at the base of the glens. The wee fairy paused, looking out across the fairy glen. Our home. A presence hung in the air. She could feel it. She always could when she came home. And then, one by one, she saw little colourful glows, just like her own, appearing from seemingly nowhere. From behind rocks, shrubs, and from within the towers themselves.
at first, only a dozen. And then hundreds. And then thousands. Like a blossoming Christmas tree scattered with fairy lights. She was home, and these were her people. As she stood there on the hill, looking out over the mall, It truly was like something out of a fairy tale. Scotland is known for its changeable weather. One day it can be pleasantly warm and sunny, then the next will be gale force winds, sub zero temperatures, and hail. On this particular evening, the Western Isles have been treated to a rare phenomenon. In order to experience this weather in its fullest, you took a short wander down the road, past the local corner shop and the small white houses lining the seafront. and past the dry dock, yachts and fishing boats, parked up for the off-season. Some of them pristine from spending the majority of their life out of water. Some of them gathering maritime dust and rotting in the coarse coastal weather, having seen the majority of their action a number of years ago. Peeling off the main road, you sidle downwards onto the shore looking out over two distinctly shaped islands, one large, jagged and long island, quite resemblant of a battleship, the other smaller, slimmer, but just as long.
They are spooky in the midnight gloom of this bizarre evening. All you wear is a single layer. There is no need for a pullover, fleece or jacket tonight. The air is humid and cloying, thick with an oppressive mugginess more akin to a warm summer day. The temperature is not warm by any means, but it feels more comfortable than it has any right to be, given the hour of the day. There is no wind, No breeze, nothing to speak of, a totally still night. Before you, the shallow waters of the bay are barely stirred, aside from the light but constant rainfall on its surface, creating a matte finish on what would otherwise be a mirror free of imperfections. You peer down the coast and spot a lone heron standing at the water's edge, motionless in the dark, almost like a statue. He guards the entrance to the water, studying the shallows, attempting to locate any tiny movements between the surface which may indicate a snack. You think it is strange that a bird such as this would be awake and hunting at this hour. But then you suppose this evening is a strange one in itself. Maybe the heron is thinking the same looking at me, wondering why I would be out of my bed at this time of night. A flash of distant lightning startles us both. The heron resultantly taking to the wing, launching his tiny frame into the air and gracefully flying over the water into the night. In that moment, the whole world was lit up as if in the midst of a spotlight's focus. Every detail in every rain cloud on shore, casting the landscape into all kinds of highlights and shadows. You wait in anticipation for the following boom of thunder 
from that far away boat. You count the seconds it takes to reach you. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. By your reckoning, it is not too far away after all. Maybe the flashes and thunder will come nearer. Maybe they won't. There is no wind, after all, to carry the turbulent clouds and air one direction or another. Just static columns of violent, warm and cold air clashing high in the atmosphere. Stirring up a frightening cocktail of electricity in near silence. And then, boom. All of that energy is released without warning. Some of the thunderclaps seem to last for a long while, echoing and bouncing off the clouds, the landscape surrounding you, and every other surface it can find in its path. Tonight, you cannot see the mainland in the distance, but you know it's there. The rainfall creating a curtain of water, too thick to see through in the darkness. of the sea, the gentle soothing sounds of water making contact with water, the rhythmical booms of thunder following the sharp jolts of lightning, hidden high above the clouds somewhere. An incredible feast for the senses. On a nearby driftwood log, you take a seat, reveling in this feast of natural drama, so strange in this part of the world. thunderstorm would usually be just one part of a wild, freezing, stormy night. But tonight it has taken on a different character altogether. Closing your eyes, you concentrate on all the sounds around you, letting them embed themselves in your being. With deep, consistent breaths, you feel yourself getting more and more 
relaxed as the rain and thunder lull you into total calm. You find yourself counting your breaths as you slip into a meditative state. Breathing is so steady and you are so focused on it. You almost forget the rain running down your cheeks, onto your shoulders. soaking your t-shirt. Leaving you saturated but still very comfortable. On this warm stormy evening A dark shape crawls over the ground far below. It glides, it flows, it meanders as the crow flies. It stops for no landmarks, no lochs, and no mountains. For hours and hours it makes haste, relentless in its pursuit of nothing much at all. High in the sky is the little rain cloud of which the shadow belongs to. It 
It floats in space, neither pushed nor pulled, just blown gently by a small breeze. All it has to worry about is enjoying the journey, relishing in these fine views over Scotland's western islands. It has been a hot summer in Scotland. And this little rain cloud is here to bring some much needed water to the thirsty plants and animals. Approaching the coast of the Isle of Mull the little rain cloud looks down below onto the rocky cliffs. These cliffs are home to hundreds of thousands of seabirds. The mountainous spine reaches into the sky, nearly brushing the bottom of the cloud. Normally so vibrant and lush, the grasses and heathers look a little dry and in need of a good drink. Seeing this, the little rain cloud summons all its might and opens the floodgates. Droplets of water spill from the cloud, forming a great dark curtain underneath, falling to the ground. From a distance, It looks like smoke pouring from the cloud, the rain hanging in space. Seeming not to move at all. Almost immediately, the seabirds take to the air and begin circling around in the downpour, reveling in the refreshing participation. Far below, little summer flowers, buttercups, daisies, and bluebells, untense. 
opening their roots to what wonderful water they can find. Almost immediately, the petals expand. They appear fuller, healthier, reaching higher towards the bright sunshine. Happy, the little rain cloud turns off its taps and sets its sight further north. Across great mountains, lochs and moorlands the cloud cruises. All alone in the sky, not rushing, not really worrying about a thing. In time, the Isle of Skye falls beneath the cloud's shadow. The southernmost tip being the first place to benefit. The late spring lambs jump and dance around in the field below. Enjoying a little shade, but they too are very thirsty. Again, summoning all its strength and energy, the little rain cloud gives everything it can and starts the downpour again. Huge droplets form, fall, and split mid-air, creating new droplets every time. The air pressure, shattering them mid-flight. And then they hit the ground with a splat, soaking the soil, making huge puddles and forming little streams over the dry mud. The sheep and lambs begin to bleat and baa, 
overjoyed at the rain. In a matter of minutes, they are contented, their thirst quenched. Across the whole island, the little rain cloud soars scattering a much-needed shower over the whole land. Every inch of earth soaks up what falls. As the rain cloud leaves sky, it's tired and exhausted. It has spent a lot of its rain. It is only small after all. But in the distance, across the sea, the outer Hebrides lie. Lewis, Harris, and the North and South US. Beautiful, vast beaches and endless horizons. Determined, the cloud sets sail. Breaching the coast of Harris, the little rain cloud scans the sky. No other clouds are here, just it. It's still all alone in the sky. The sun is setting, the sky begins to turn pinky, the day is coming to an end. Tomorrow, all over again, Scotland will bake in the heat. On the ground below, the cloud sees that streams run dry. Loch levels are low, and fields show signs of browning. This landscape needs the little rain cloud.
so yet again the cloud tries as hard as it can to summon what rainfall it has left. It tried so hard that the cloud releases an enormous deluge on the island. A vast waterfall descends, heavy, dark and powerful. The rain reaches the surface of the earth and floods it, drenching it in goodness, pouring all over the dried shrubs, trees, plants and thirsty animals. in a little farmhouse in the corner of one particular field this sudden downpour takes a young boy by surprise He throws on his welly boots and races outside, excited by the huge puddles forming. Jumping and splashing, he laughs and runs around, grinning, exhilarated by the cool rain on this hot day. And then suddenly, the rain stops as if turned off by a tap. Silence falls. How strange. He looks around, confused peering into the sky for an answer. But he doesn't find one. To his surprise and bewilderment, Gazing up at the deep blue abyss, he sees and finds nothing. Far around, in every direction, There is not a cloud in the sky.
The little black and white dipper hops carefully from rock to rock, eyeing the stream for something to eat. Patiently she ponders, wonders and investigates the fast-moving shallows, willing something appealing to show itself. Eventually, the small bird swoops upwards, and as quickly as it had arisen, it plunges downwards and loses itself in the depths of the rapids. She seems to be gone for more than a moment, your eyes chasing left to right in search of a little black bird emerging. Still, you wait, until finally she emerges from the water onto a nearby rock and vibrates her delicate little feathers free of any water droplets. The bird is too far away from where you're sitting to see if she was successful in her hunt. But she seems to be busy so you hope she was. Just as the little dipper perches on a rock, so do you. A large, flat, wild flagstone sits defiantly on the slope of the glen, acting as a perfect landing spot for all those on a walk in the hills. You cast your eyes out over the glen in front of you, following the little stream downhill, drinking in the vastness of the loch. consuming the rich green forests that are soaked in an ethereal mist, and reveling in the peace and quiet. No noise pollution, nothing. Just the sound of relentless rain. You are on your own, somewhere near Aberfoyle. Here, you are in Loch and Hill territory, an area which many consider to be one of the most stunning, unspoiled areas in Scotland. Not many people know about this area. You keep it your own personal secret escape. Sat on the rock, feeling the damp reach into your clothes, your hair and your boots. You consider your options carefully. In an act of joyous impulsion, you kick off your footwear, unzip your jacket and cast them aside. letting the rain wash over you with an invigorating fresh shower. 
You smile as the water soaks you instantly, penetrating your clothes and clumping your hair. We spend so much time trying to keep the rain out for fear of getting too cold and wet. But today is comfortable. So why not embrace the elements? There is nothing more wonderful than unproofing ourselves to live in that moment of weather. Whether it be swimming in the sea or fresh water, dancing in the waves, or standing on an exposed mountain top letting the gusting wind punish you, undressing all your walking clothes just to stand underneath a waterfall, or even diving into a snow flurry in winter, making snow angels like a child. These moments are deeply humbling, and you love making the most of every one of them. You've learned not to pay any attention to the passing glances of strangers, questioning your decision to brave the elements. You want to feel alive, and you can never help but grin. So here you sit, on the large grey flagstone, with a view most people would spend a lifetime dreaming for. You feel a deep sense of gratitude wash over you as you drink in the stunning highland landscape. How privileged you feel to be able to call this place in the world your home for the day. Scanning the surrounding glen, you take in some of the finer details To your left, a hundred metres or so away, a gnarled, twisted tree punctuates the hillside, free of any surrounding tree friends, a true veteran of the elements. It stands impossibly in the wilderness shrugging off any of Scotland's most volatile weather. You're not sure what type of tree it is, or how old it must be, but you think it is rather beautiful, regardless of its leafless appearance. To your right, you lock eyes on a lone patch of colourful green and lilac heather, threatening to blossom. It must be the first of the year, for it also is alone like the tree. like a diamond in the grassy rough. 
the tiny purple blooms stand out against the earth. Casting your eyes upwards, you try to focus on any details in the overcast clouds. Despite the rain, the sky is bright and you close your eyes slightly as the light overwhelms you. The difficulty of focusing is doubled as you battle with the speeding raindrops falling from the atmosphere as they clash with your eyes, forcing you to flinch. But you don't mind. Again, you embrace it the cool water fresh on your skin. The sound of the rain soothes your soul. A constant percussive patter. Broken only by the occasional sharp snaps of some larger droplets making contact with the rock surrounding you. Each raindrop is unique, as is the noise it makes when it reaches the ground. Do you wonder if there has ever been a raindrop that made the exact same noise as another? The same pop, crack or splat? The same sound wave? The same volume? Probably not. It is probably impossible to tell. Turning your eyes downwards toward the rock, you see a little puddle forming by your hand a small stream feeding it. Each raindrop landing in the puddle seems to bounce back up in slow motion. Stopping in time as the droplet hangs in the air They seem so delicate, too gentle to be creating the combined noise of the rain, but the white noise does nothing but soothe you. You feel privileged be able to call this place in the world your home for the day.
Boarding the ferry back to mainland Scotland with something none of us will ever forget. It was 7pm in St Margaret's Hope. Cars were queuing to get on. Headlights pushing through the gloom and torrential rain. Windscreen wipers at full chat. The boat crew screamed commands to drivers and foot passengers alike, shielding their eyes from the violent rain and wind. Doing their best to urge everyone into some form of order. Children were crying, terrorised by the noise, the thunder, and the lightning. The boat swaying side to side, even in port. The captain had fired up the engines and wrestled the wheel in an effort to keep the catamaran from colliding with the pier whilst everyone boarded. Jake, Martin and I helped all the young, the families, and the elderly aboard first. Our needs less so than theirs. The storm was coming. This ferry was a lifeline to Orkney. The only connection for families to the mainland in weather like this. The ramp was raised and the ropes were detached. The engines roared, the boat lurched into forward propulsion. It was now or never. As the ferry rounded the headland, out into open water, the sides were suddenly hit by a wall of wind and water. The cabins shook violently, every wave like a battering ram against the steel and enamel paint. Every third or fourth wave, the boat would nosedive into a trough, as if falling from a cliff, 
and a sense of vertigo overwhelmed everyone. Then out of nowhere the bow would pick up, sending us skywards before returning to Earth. This pattern repeated the whole way to Scotland. He stared out of one of the small windows, clinging to a nearby railing. The sea was a mass of alpine waves, white foam and breaking white horses. The thunder and lightning raged overhead, directly above the channel. Great flashes and booms thundering through the steelwork, even above the storm itself. What was rainfall and what was sea spray, it was impossible to tell. It was all one and the same thing, a giant combination of all elements at this point. Whatever it was, the window was being battered by it. Then what was once a wave 30 feet below would suddenly rush up towards the glass and engulf it, plunging the portal underwater. The resulting waves found gaps in the steelwork, around doors and the walkways outside. It was terrifying. All three of us with sweat on our brow, stayed close. We urged the boat onwards, trying our best to keep our balance. A long hour passed. The boat being tossed around by the North Sea. It took 15 minutes for the skipper 
to skillfully manoeuvre the hulking catamaran into position at the Gills Bay. Carefully timing his approach so as not to crash into the dock. Everyone breathed a great sigh of relief, knowing that they were nearly on to the next part of their journey. The boat still rocked heavily from side to side and pitched up and down. Stepping off onto dry land was still a treacherous process. The ramps clattering creaking and graunching on the concrete slip. Us foot passengers left first, crossing as quickly as we could so as to avoid any risks of being knocked over by the weather. Within seconds, we were soaked again. The taste of the sea salt forced into our mouths. The gale ripping through our clothes as if they were netted gauze. Jake had the car key, and we were relieved to see. It was still where we left it. Although it was covered in debris, which had been picked up by the wind. We leapt behind the closed doors for safety, pulling off our waterlogged garments. Breathless and panting, we quietly watched as the mainland dwelling friends and families welcomed their loved ones in deep embraces, helping them to shelter in a car or an outbuilding. Everyone was as relieved as us.
staring at the sky and listening to radio announcements. He calculated, determined, and measured the risk. We needed to make it to Inverness. So long as the roads remained open and intact, we were confident we could make it. From the very northern tip of Scotland, we set off south. Through the battered, bruised, and beaten coastal landscapes of Barren, Caithness and Sutherland we wrestled. We fought against the wind coming off the sea in an effort to keep the car on the straight and narrow. Trees fell, hail descended like artillery, and cars aquaplaned off the road. This was no easy journey at all. Through these ordinarily beautiful landscapes we trundle never taking our eyes off the road, feared of losing concentration for a moment, with terrible results. The sky above looked angry, moody, and ready to burst into fury again and again. And each time it did. We braced ourselves again for the rain to come. Through the granite appearance of Wick, historic clearance village, of Helmsdale, pretty town of Golsby, and the whisky capital of Tain, we drove 
and ploughed through the standing water and fallen trees. Just praying for the storm to subside even a little. Something or someone must have heard our wishes. Because as we neared Inverness, our safety point, the wind just dropped like a stone. And then, almost as quickly, the rain ended as if switched off like a tap at the source. We stared at each other in amazement. The windscreen wipers on the car drying and squeaking in a matter of seconds. Yes, weather changes quickly, but in a matter of a minute or so, We were stumped. Just along the coast of the Cromarty Firth, not far from the beautiful Dalmore distillery, we pulled the car over by the seashore. It was truly bizarre, as here we were, standing outside in the elements, with barely a breeze to rustle our hair. we looked upon waves which still tumbled and crashed onto the beach. Still a living memory of the winds which had pushed them not ten minutes before. The sky still churned overhead, but there was a difference in the light. A whisper of golden sunset lurked on the horizon in a different land. One that was different to our own in that moment. But it was a promise of sorts.
as we crossed the Keswick Bridge, reunited with roads we had journeyed upon less than a week before, we reflected on our time on the North Coast 500. Just as we had thought we'd seen it all, and experienced everything, we were plunged into the finale. A true test of Scottish grit and spirit. We'd all weathered storms before. It's a regular part of life up here, especially coming from an island. But something would have felt missing from our trip if we hadn't felt the full spectrum of diversity. Because that's what Scotland is all about. It's incredible diversity. The scenery, the weather, the food, the drink, and the people. So as we spanned the Murray Firth once again, We left the highlands and raised an imaginary glass to Scotland and all it represents. On the final night of our North Coast 500 trip, Jake, Martin, and myself left the storm behind and aimed towards the setting sun. All was peaceful until the very moment it wasn't. There had been no warning, no build up, no signs of anything untoward 
on your travels. They had been hidden, unseen for months, but not now, no longer. You'd been minding your own business. Putting one foot in front of the other. Heavy, rain-soaked fur skins and leather, buckle-bound boots weighing you down in this wild Highland storm. Having set off early in the morning, you'd been trekking for hours. Traversing the contours of this dramatic, magical landscape. You estimated the total journey time to take you about a day. Not requiring you to stop overnight. The weather had limited your progress, as was typical. A prevailing storm from the northeast, blowing down cold Arctic air, which carried with it the heaviest of rainfall. You were exhausted. In this early evening, despite the gloom, you knew you only had a few more hours remaining. You recognized these parts from your childhood. Although you've not been up this way for a very long time. Not many venture further north than they had to. They never have, and they likely never will. and with good reason. The only thing which might have suggested what was about to happen was the darkening of the clouds They swirled around 
in the eye of the storm, as expected, but seemed to quickly take on a sinister gloom in a matter of only moments. And then it happened. At first, the ground began to tremor. And then you heard the tremors. Just a caricature of the feeling under your sodden boot. You froze in your place, wondering what was happening. You felt your heartbeat racing, your pulse soaring. Total bewilderment and confusion as to the source of this subterranean thunder. In the seconds that followed, you racked your brain, but exhaustion was all you found. The long day of being battered by Scotland's finest weather had left you drained and weary. Unable to re-engage with reality, Would it be an earthquake? You didn't think so. Or was it the thunder? Couldn't possibly be. And then it clicked in place. Suddenly, crisply, vividly, your eyes widened and face went pale as a ghost. The folklore had always said Scotland was home not only to fairies and demons, but also giants. The limited size of the land made coexistence between these creatures quite difficult.
So fighting over territory and using magic on enemies was common. One version of the legend said two giants were occupying the ridge just north of your village. But they were fleeing from a demon which had declared a state of war on them. when they were running for their lives they unwisely looked back and were turned into a cluster of giant stones Now they were standing at the old man of store to remind everyone that looking at a demon chasing after you turns you into the same material as this spectacular landscape. And so, the landscape had remained this way for many a millennia. But in the centuries of late, people had started to notice the landscape shifting. Sometimes unimaginably. Totally changing shape. Deforming in strange ways. and fully rearranging itself. The people of the villagers couldn't make sense of what they were witnessing. Until one winter's morning, a local farmer was tending to his sheep in the wee small hours. When suddenly the earth shook violently before two enormous giants built from stone burst out of the ground up on the mountainside. They then proceeded to clash and engage in physical combat until one of the giants conceded, shrinking away back into the earth 
from which it came. For whatever reason, civil war had broken out among the giants. And myth had it, the war had raged on until this very day. And so here you stood, punished by the raging storm. Thunder booming all around you. Recalling these tales told to you by your elders as a child. Feeling the earth shake underneath your feet. And then, like a crack of lightning, the ground parted up on the hillside towards the jagged cliffs which hung above you. Great boulders were cast to the skies. Earth and mud was spun skywards, scattered in all directions. The cliffs themselves seemed to shake and twist. Until you realised that they too started to move and sway. You squinted through the darkness of the night to try and see more clearly But it became obvious as to what you were witnessing. A stone giant was emerging from the land. Another thunderclap rattled around the cliffs like a natural auditorium, deafening you. Fearing what might come next? You scan your surroundings, looking for somewhere to hide. A 
by a tree stump in the shelter of a nearby woodland. You would be out of view there. Leaping over the rocks, tufty grasses, and boggy peat. You shot behind the protection of the tree's remains and peered out over the top. Ready to capture this incomprehensible event. Eyes wide, mouth open, you watched. The stone giant was stretching up to the sky. Shaking violently side to side, as if locked in an embrace with itself. The beast roared and boomed its cries of thunder. which echoed off every surface for miles around. Lumps of stone, loose rocks and dirt continued to fall from this great being as it wrestled itself from the land. The night air concealed much of the detail of this giant. It seemed to have the stature of a bear. Great stocky granite legs met a wide, deep torso. and thick, dense arms, neck and head. Or so you thought. shaking for seconds after each giant leg made contact with the ground.
But then, the giant separated, splitting into two. You strained your eyes further in the lashing rain, attempting to make clear what you couldn't make sense of. But then it hit you. It was two giants, locked in combat. Another big flash of lightning sent a brief spotlight on these behemoths. Illuminating their features. The storm water washed off their heads and shoulders like a waterfall. The lightning picking out highlights on their pale stone facades, bouncing off the wet faces of the rock. Their faces were somber. Featureless, statuesque, belying their emotions. It was like watching two humans in slow motion. The way they swung great swings of their granite fists. Clashing with shattering booms through the night sky. Splinters and shards of shale soared through the sky, showering the moors and mountainsides. Minutes went on and the two giants persisted, trading blow for blow, neither backing down, nor showing any signs of weakness. You wondered what this story was. Were they great nemesis in a past life? 
destined to come to blows through history. Were they brothers? Father and son? Or were they fighting for the love of a woman? You guessed you'd never know. The battle wore on. You still pinned to your post, unable to look away. The storm strengthened, the wind picking up, which carried the rain more horizontally than vertically. The unsteadied giant began to fall. arms flailing in a feeble attempt to regain control. But it was not enough. It came down hard on the ground. Rock and shards exploding in every direction. Huge boulders careered down the hillside, some gathering momentum and becoming airborne again and again. In the giant's place was a pile of rubble. It was gone. Over in a flash, one simple error had been the demise of this giant. Through the driving rain, you peered at the victor. It stood there, over its opponent, visually exhausted. Silence seemed to deafen your ears. All was still. Finally, the giant began to move. turning on its heel. 
and aiming for the hills. Slowly and lazily, evidently feeling defeated itself. It trudged away, looking dejected, as if it was experiencing sorrow or a deep sadness. The giant was disappearing into the storm. You breathed at last, feeling as though you'd held your breath for an eternity whilst you watched on. without thinking, for fear of reasonable doubt regarding your next decision, you picked yourself up. into the storm in pursuit of the stone giant.